Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Some Dungeon Guy. Today we're doing another part of our Incarnate Mapping tutorial series. Today is about converting your hand-drawn maps into digital masterpieces. That's right. We're going to show you how to take your hand-drawn maps from this hand-drawn map here and convert it digitally into a finished product in Incarnate. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that like button and leave a comment below for more video ideas. Let's get to it. Alrighty, folks. This is a well-requested feature of Incarnate little bit misunderstood super easy to do this can get you from a napkin to an incarnate style Dungeons and Dragons or TTRPG style map in a little bit of no time so provided that you have gone through the basics of how to use incarnate if you have not I'll have a link below to the my in instructional videos uh, that being said uh, what we're gonna do today is we are converting a map drawn on paper to a digital format okay so provided you are familiar with incarnate we're going to go here and we're going to create a new map now whatever asset pack you choose to use is certainly up to you it's what your finished map will have pre-generated but you can change it as you go i'm going to choose fantasy digital high def um, now i'm also going to choose the square pattern because the map i drew out on paper is uh, a little bit more square so we're going to keep it at that again so Here's a couple important steps. We all know the controls, right? Number one, we're going to use a paintbrush tool, all right? We're gonna to go to the brush tool. We're going to open our catalog. Now, from here, we're gonna click the upload button here in the top, choose image file. Now, this is provided that you have taken a picture, usually with your smartphone, web camera, whatever, of the image that you want to upload, okay? So, I'm gonna choose image file. I've already got mine saved to a folder. I'm gonna click it. And just like that, it is going to upload my shoddily drawn hand graph paper style map, okay? Now, it doesn't fit the, min the window, we get that, okay? We're gonna change that momentarily. At this point, it's worth pointing out that the larger the image, the better. Uh, a small image won't necessarily cover the entire map surface. So, down here in the bottom, uh, we're gonna go ahead and click Save Texture, okay? All the other things are just previews, not something we need, okay? And once that loads, it's going to tell you that it's private. That's fine. And it's going to show up here in your catalog of options. Now, scroll out a little. The next thing we're going to do on this brush tool, I'm going to select the whole map. Okay. Now, note that I am on the background layer. You can do it on either one. This is sort of a hot tip. We're going to hit the background layer and hit enter. Okay. So get an idea of what size we're looking for. Now, we go into advanced settings and we're going to change that size. Okay. So we're gonna get it till it's kinda close, all right? Once it's kinda close, then we're going to be able to move it a little bit with the offset buttons, okay? So get it there, we're gonna up it a little bit more. And if you happen to know the size you're looking for, great. Okay, so um, one more time, so we got it, we're close. And basically you're just gonna play with this and you can go slower or faster, but you're gonna play with this until you get it uh, to where you want every time i'm hitting enter i uh, really could have uh, done the offsets beforehand anyway so now we have the background layer okay now i'm going to switch it to foreground layer all right this is important for me go to filters i'm going to change the brightness down just a smidgen okay and then i'm going to fill foreground right here okay it doesn't look like you did anything but what happens is the background and the foreground are going to be a very similar layer One's gonna be a slightly different color, which makes this next step all the easier. Now, we're gonna go up here to the mask tool, all right? Mask is how you create land and incarnate, if you are not familiar. Again, if you need help learning how to do that, uh, link in the description for my tutorial on how to make land masses, okay? So, just like that, we're gonna trace the, we're gonna trace our land, okay? I'm gonna make this tip a little smaller here um, with the hotkeys S and W, and you can see where it is making slightly darker shade now i'm gonna just loosely draw around this thing okay so what you do is if you loosely draw around it you can go back in and edit it in a little while we are roughing it in right kind of like framing a house you're gonna get the basic stuff but you're not gonna put up the pictures and the wall sconces and stuff like that okay so we are simply roughing it into where we think we're gonna want it okay then we can go ahead and fill in some of the other parts and again you can see where we chose the same background and foreground but one is different so we can tell where we've drawn however 
we still have access to see the various uh, mountains, trees, water features, etc., that we wanted to have in our hand drawn map. Okay, so we're gonna take a couple seconds here and we're just gonna fill in the rest of these now. Again, this part not super important because at any point in time you can change it, okay? Uh, even the hand-drawn map, if you're like, well, that's not what I wanted, we can go back in and change it. It's not a big deal, okay? So I'm going to slap a little land in here. I'm shrinking that. And just like that, we're going to trace around our islands, all right? Again, this is just a rough map. Threw it together on paper when I wasn't feeling well the other day because I have been under the weather for a couple of weeks. Unable to make videos even. It's been kind of rough. So, glad to be back at it. Now, here we go. We're just going to slap in a couple more of these bad guys. And you can see uh, off the bottom here uh, where it doesn't have any more map. Yeah, it'll still color it in. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and quickly walk you through the rest of the process of adding some assets. Of course, you can see how I've marked uh, my mountains, trees, rivers, and things like that. And you've drawn the map, so at this point, I hope that you understand what you meant when you wrote it on your paper. Uh, but again, this is for just a quick idea. And you can see how quickly you can outline the entirety of your map just like that. Now, we talk about hand-drawn maps. Of course, let's say you have a map of your local town that you want. Take a picture of it. Slap it up as a texture in that uh, brush tool, and you can actually go ahead and recreate any town, any location you want. Uh, you got a friend who made a good map great if he wants to share it with you take a picture of it find something online take a picture of it okay uh, find yourself you know making additions or subtractions to something in your head you have a perfect opportunity just to go with it and turn your own hand drawn creation into an incarnate map now again throughout this period I'm showing you uh, you should be seeing some making some cliffs some mountains some trees um, again this is just a rough idea this is just a quick uh, 20 minute map on my end sped up a little bit, but uh, just kind of showing you an idea. If you want to find some more information about how to shade in the land, how to use the stamps, how to actually create the land process, if you want more of those tips and tricks, join me in my other videos. I'll put a link in the descriptions below. Uh, I do have an entire series on incarnate maps, okay? Again, here we are, just that easy, making some hand drawn maps slapping them up inside some incarnate great yeah. and quickly going through some tools and things like that you know it's kind of fun because I can make my own maps and I can make them funny shapes of course you can draw these out in incarnate it's not that hard but you know you find yourself doodling whether that's in class whether you're at work on a break or something um, you know depends on what you're doing draw yourself out a map if you're thinking of a new world but I kind of like sometimes playing around making these funny shapes gonna look like a little bit of a uh, you know, Pac-Man ghost, pinky blinky, one of those guys, um, almost looks a little sad. And then through here, again, we're just going to fill in some, some more rivers, uh, getting ready to make the actual land color a little bit different to make it actually flow with what land color would actually be. And you're going to see here in a moment, I'm going to be adding in some, like I said, some of these details, but once I start shading in, I'm going to be using a couple of my techniques of shading the uh, coastlines putting that dark edge and then going back over it with a sandy edge to give it a little bit of depth uh, to give it the impression that it's uh, you know almost like a three-dimensional maybe like a little rise coming out of the water and so like small cliffs we're just gonna color in behind the mountains and things again just gonna make all these things pop just a little bit more and of course looks a little bit tropical maybe so I'm gonna slap in some sand some beaches right just like that and again nothing here has to be exact we are you know, just kind of winging it, doing your own thing. If you have an exact idea, you can take more time. You can edit and do exactly what you want. Uh, I, on the other hand, just kind of, just kind of winging it. So here we're going to add some paths. Of course, we're making some trails from city to city. You can, uh, you can find these in my stamp tool video as well on how to actually make and edit paths. Uh, pretty simple stuff, but a little tricky the first couple of times. We're going to add some texture to this little boring island up here. And anytime I have some empty islands, I like to go back through and just, you know, at least fill them in with some, maybe some palm trees, uh, you know, some other trees and things like that. And give myself some points of interest as well, like a crashed ship or perhaps an abandoned tower up here in the, uh, um, and a little bit of color, you know, go back through, edit some of the planes and some of those things. I like to edit my brush uh, texture colors just to give it a little bit of variety so it's not the same 
green just kind of plastered all over the place, right? Then we'll save it, name our map, and you're good to go. Well, that just about wraps us up for today. Again, I'm your host, Some Dungeon Guy. This has been one of our incarnate map making tutorials. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button for more content. And again, leave us a comment below so we have an idea of what to make next. And as always, have a good day.